In the last video, you learned how to make a primary impression for an edentulous patient using impression compound. The impression is poured with type 2 dental stone and the cast is allowed to dry out completely to prepare for the fabrication of the custom tray. Mark the outline of the maxillary denture bearing area. Using a pencil, draw a line that passes in the full depth of the sulcus anteriorly. The distal end of the maxillary denture is marked using a line that passes between the two hamilar notches distal to the maxillary tuberosities posteriorly. Next, draw a second line that is 2 mm away from the depth of the sulcus. This is to leave room for the tracing compound during border molding. Now, note that the two lines meet at the distal end of the denture bearing area. Mark the outline of the mandibular denture bearing area. Draw a line that extends to the full depth of the buccal and the linguine sulcus extending posteriorly to cover the retromolar pump. Next, draw a second line that is 2 mm away from the sulcus. You may use a fine marker to do this as it will help you see the borders of the tray while trimming. To start making the custom tray, coat the surface of the cast with a thin film of Vaseline. Get a sheet of light cured acrylic and adapt it to the surface of the cast starting from the center in an outward direction. Fold the material gently into the full depth of the sulcus to make sure that the sheet is closely adapted to the surface of the cast and air is not trapped beneath the surface. Use a sharp lacrone carver to trim away excess material according to the second line you drew earlier, the one that's 2 mm away from the depth of the sulcus, as you're going to provide enough space for the tracing compound material to border mold the peripheries of the denture bearing area. And make sure that you provide enough space for the frenum and that you follow the anatomy of the denture bearing area. Now to make the tray handle, collect all the excess material and shape it into a cylinder. From one end, cut halfway and shape the material with your fingertips. Place it over the tray in the midline and adapt it to the base of the tray. Make sure that the handle is set at around 90 degrees so that it does not interfere with the lip while making the impression and that the Top third of the tray should be slightly curved to allow the dentist to hold the tray while making the impression. Follow the same steps to make the mandibular special tray. The only difference is that you need to provide tongue space. So remove excess material from the lingual sulcus and then cut the tray 2 mm away from the full depth. Shape the tray handle the same way you did with the upper special tray. Place the tray in the light chamber for 3 minutes to cure.
remove the tray from the cast and cure it on the fitting surface for an additional minute. Once the tray is fully cured, now is the time for finishing and polishing. For this you're going to use an acrylic burr fixed on a straight handpiece that you can see over your bench. The correct way to hold a straight handpiece is by using the palm grasp. Hold the handpiece with your palms and use your thumb to provide support. Turn on the straight handpiece motor on the side of your bench. Set the speed to 25,000 rounds per minute and push the switch with the side of your leg to operate the motor. When you start finishing the margins of the tray, make sure that you're not reducing the height, you're only smoothening the sharp edges. And notice how the technician here is using her thumb as a finger rest. To polish the edges of the tray, use sandpaper secured on a mandrel as you can see here. Attach the mandrel to the straight handpiece as you did previously with the acrylic burr. Lower the speed of the handpiece motor to 10,000 rounds per minute. Check the margins of the tray. They should be smooth and extending 2 mm away from the depth of the sulcus, except for posteriorly they should be extending to the distal end of the denture bearing area, both in the maxilla and the mandible. Once you're finished, you're now ready to prepare for the next procedure, which is border molding and secondary impression.